So the other day, randomly, I got an email from a guy called Rob, who I've never met before. He reached out because he'd been watching the YouTube channel, and he said, hey, Chris, there's an island, Red Island, that I have access to on private property, which is a place where the reds come off the pasture and they come into this bush block. And I reckon if we can go out and hunt it together, do you want to come? And I said, Rob, I don't know you. I've never hunted in that area before, so sounds like an adventure. <laughs> so tomorrow morning, I'm going to get up at the crack of dawn. I'm going to drive out there. I'm going to meet Rob for the first time. We're going to hunt in this area and hopefully we can snag ourselves a red deer. Let's go. So it's four o'clock the next morning, my alarm goes off and I groggily get out of bed and get changed in my hunting gear. You can tell I have kids, obviously. <laughs> but uh, I actually saw a dirty big fox on the way there as well, driving. But I didn't want to intentionally record the first encounter I had with Rob because I didn't want to freak him out, hopping out of the car and holding a camera. But I did actually record the audio. So this was my first encounter with a stranger, Rob, in the dark. Rob, yeah, how are you coming? Good, mate. How are you? Yeah, nice to meet you. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. you never guess what just happened. Yeah. You know how I sort of did the drive around? Yeah. So I'm over at this spot and the sun's not up. Yeah. So I'm sitting in the car thinking, oh, I'm a bit early. I can't even. And as the sun's coming up, I'm looking out the window going, from about here to like that crash barricade. Yeah. It's about four pages. So it was great news, it meant that the red deer were down in the pastures and they'd slowly make their way back up feeding. So we crashed through the bush to get to our sitting positions, hoping that they'd slowly meander up and we could take our shot. Alright, so I'm at the hunting destination, I've met Rob, and uh, it was good, wasn't, wasn't awkward at all. Rob's a great guy, didn't kill me. <laughs> no stranger danger there. So what we've done is we've um, popped into this red island, this bush area and we've climbed over a ridge and we've just popped down and there's a gully that's feeding into where we're looking. So it's about seven o'clock now, so we're getting pretty late in the morning, but uh, Rob said that these deer generally feed up until, can even up until about 10 o'clock because there's not a lot of pressure on them. So um, given it's a bit cooler today, what we're hoping is that they come up this valley, this gully here, up the ridge and we can spot them coming through. So I'm sitting here in a certain vantage point and Rob's probably about 300 meters off this way, just a little bit higher. So we'll just sit here and wait. I might make some calls and uh, see what pops out. Before we go any further, let me take 20 seconds to tell you about the best hunting club in Australia and why you should join. Hunting Trips Australia has the best hunting club in the country, as well as your stock standard inclusions like public liability hunting insurance and genuine reason to own a firearm. Membership also includes awesome perks like monthly hunting product giveaways, bi-monthly guided hunt giveaways, hunting product and course discounts, weekly early access to the Huntsman videos, an exclusive invitation to the annual camp and a bunch more. So get your butt over to huntingtrips.com.au slash membership and join Australia's best hunting club. I'll see you there. So unfortunately, this is not the part that you generally see in a video. Sitting at home watching, you don't, you don't kind of take part in the hours of just sitting and doing absolutely nothing but looking and spending the time glassing. And it's in some ways a real shame because in terms of experientially, that's a lot of what this is. Is uh, sitting and waiting wondering whether the decisions you made are the right decisions, wondering whether someone's going to walk through the area that you've, you know, planned and invested all those hours in. And the beauty of this relationship and what gives it its deepness and complexity is the fact that you can invest all of that time sitting here in class and planning and see absolutely nothing. Luckily, I tend to cut those bits out of the video, but I wanted to give you a small taste of it, even if it's only tiny, because while you're here sitting at home watching, I'm out here, waiting. <laughs> That's right, you can wait with me. I'm happy with that. I hope you're happy with that too.
sitting out here waiting, I figure I'd share a technique with you that I've um, taught myself actually over the years. And it's a technique that I like to use when I first enter a hunting area. So once I've sat down, I've got my spot, I have an idea of where I think the deer will come from or the animals. It could be pigs, it could be anything. But what I like to do is first I like to use my binos and I like to find points of interest, things I can eagerly recognize. So like they could be broken trees, particularly wide branches, um, open areas, weird rocks, stuff like that. And I like to fix in my mind, I like create like a virtual space of, of that area in my mind and kind of map them to it. And then I like to pick up my binos and quickly move from one point to the other. Um, and then what I like to do is put my binos down to the same thing with my rifle uh, because you can essentially what you're doing then is you're, you're teaching your brain the distance between those objects relative to the magnification that you have from your binos to your rifle so that when you do see that animal pop up you kind of figure out where's the closest landmark to that animal and automatically your binos can come up or you can pull out your scope rifle and you can immediately see where you have to look so it's a great way of quickly kind of um, finding the area where the deer will be uh, in depth of relative space so that you can take that shot quickly if you need to. Otherwise, you see the deer, then you're fluffing around with your binos trying to find it. Okay, there it is. And you have to go pick up your rifle and the heat of the moment with all the adrenaline rushing through you. They can be really valuable seconds that you've wasted that potentially could cost you the animal. Try it. See if it works for you. So it's just started to rain. Um, it's nearly probably about eight o'clock now. Um, the deer are still down in the paddock. We haven't seen them, but this is like the system that they move through to get up over the ridge. So the rain could actually work in our favor. Um, it could help draw the deer up into the coverage where it's a little bit more sheltered in here. So, I mean, I don't mind sitting in the rain. <laughs> my hood over and I'll suck it up and uh, hopefully it draws them in I, I wanted to buck it down that's fine bye bye me just makes it difficult to hear them when it's raining so loud at the moment we have the advantage because we know where they are they don't know that we're here yet the wind's been fine so it hasn't blown our scent down to them yet but uh, if it rains really heavily it will push them up into this thick area but it will also make them super stealthy, so it's a bit of a trade-off. Can't control it, so just got to understand what it does and work with it. So Rob's actually um, got to push up a little bit further, closer towards the paddocks. Um, he's got to try and get eyeballs on the deer we were debating before about whether it was a good idea to kind of peek in and have a look um, and for me I'm a bit lower and so I don't have a vantage point so I'd have to get right to the end of the fringe and I just don't want to put my scent all through this area um, through this system but Rob's actually going to poke up a little bit further and get to a vantage point where he can see down and confirm if the deer are actually in there and even if he does wind them all it will do is push them towards my direction so it's kind of a, a risk that we're willing to take at the moment. So he's heading up there now. I just need to stay focused and uh, stop recording videos. <laughs> and start looking directly down the barrel and see uh, what comes out. All right, so we're on. So Rob's just um, accidentally bumped them. He got croaked by the stag. Um, he's actually dropped his antlers, which is interesting. So uh, he's headed off now to kind of see if he can intercept them. They've bumped into the bush and now I have to head this way up. Um, they haven't seen him yet and they haven't winded him. They've just seen the movement. So they're not fully spooked yet. So we still have a chance, but uh, can I get up and get my butt moving if we're gonna get these deer? Let's go. Look what I've just found. Standing on this tree, <laughs> fallen trees. 
And the uh, question is, is have I got here soon enough? Um, so there's a couple of gullies that feed up uh, and we imagine that they've gone up one of these gullies. So this is my gully here. There's the fringe land. So they'll come up this way. And then Rob, he's over in the next gully across. So the question is, am I here early or am I here late? Because if you're here late, then what I should be doing is pushing over this rise and seeing if they're on the other side of it going down. Because um, it's quite a, a deep valley that runs straight through here. Uh, and I imagine they'll want to get down into that. So they're in the middle of the bush. But uh, I don't want to leave this spot if they haven't come up here yet because this is the perfect space where I can wait and watch them come up. Pick which one I want and take a shot. So I think I'll just sit here for a minute because I can always push over that rise later. They're not going to go anywhere. They'll, if they're over the rise, they'll stay over there and they'll just feed in that gut, in that valley and we can come back to them. But if they haven't come here yet, then I don't want to miss out my opportunity to sit here and just keep glassing and hopefully get them. So, Or they could go up props. Golly, who knows? They're joys. I'm going to keep watching. Tell me a story. Tell it. Tell, tell it your own story. <laughs> so, just going down this ridge here. Because they pop up in different spots. Yeah. And there's this one track that I can go down and get a view of the pasture. Yeah. That all on there? Yeah, just on the other side of the ridge there. You can't quite see it from here. It's only 20 metres down. Yeah. So I crept up there. Um, <laughs> popped my head up next to this big tree where I can see down yeah. and at the same time I've done this <laughs> this heavily pregnant doe has gone pump broadside in front of me at about 15 metres with her yearling behind who's just chewing and looking you know doing the yearling thing. Wow that's super close. Yeah super close and so I just froze Yeah. and brought the rifle up to ready because I wanted the yearling, yearling. to shoot the, yeah, yeah, the mom. pregnant doe because Oh, for whatever reasons. Yeah, fair enough. And then as I did that, the doe saw me and we were eyes locked and then I saw in my periphery, bump, 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 bump. <laughs> and then you heard the croak. Well, with these deer popped up. So I'm standing. Was it, were they, so they were, they were heading up the gully, they were out of the pasture? They were heading, yeah, they were heading up. Oh. Right, just on the other side right of the ridge. You, right where you were before you probably started um, poking out. I was up here. Oh, okay. So I had... You say this all the time. Had you originally stuck to your gut feeling yeah. and stuck to your guns, that probably would have worked out. Would have they would have come up here, but most likely in yeah, 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 this yeah, open yeah, spot, yeah. which would have been, you know, take your pick yeah, yeah. at 100 metres. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I froze, but I'm standing up, and we've been walking all morning, right? Yeah, so I'm yeah. starting to get the death wobbles like yeah, doing these yeah, ones. Yeah. And then the doe did its usual thing where they they look at what they pretend to look away, take one step and they go bang, try and catch you again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So as soon as it and the kind of the neck comes around. Yeah, yeah. So as soon as it did that, I went, oh, I think I'll get down, get down low. <laughs> like, oh, it's my legs again. <laughs> getting in. I always do like, I'm like, my hands are shaking and I'm like, is it safety or not safety? And I'm like, yeah, flicking the yeah. thing. And then the yearling took half a step and I could see about this. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> yeah, that's a pretty nasty shot. 15 well, minutes straight through the face. Thought, anyway, yeah. so. Um, and then I just waited it out for a little bit more and then the big boy, the buck, he's lost his antlers. Did he smell you? Just really solid, just big, chunky stocky, boy, big red animal. Yeah, oh, no, they're the ones that I love. No chunks at him or anything and he just looked straight at me in the eyes and went, Ugh. Yeah. And they all went, okay. 
Did they bolt or did they kind of no, just walk? They didn't have wind on there. Okay. All they could see was a bit of movement and uh, knew something was a bit wrong. So they just started pushing up the system. Yeah, so then they doubled back, which they tend to do, which made me think, well, they're not going to go back onto the pasture or it's, most, it, it's more unlikely. Yeah. So they're going to usually go back, pop over this side, come up this re-entrant. Oh, uh, yeah, and you were hoping I get them this way? Yeah, so okay. if you came, because they didn't have wind, they usually crash off. Yeah. A million miles an hour. Yeah, 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 yeah. But they were kind of, oh yeah, well, Chief has said move, so yeah, let's, yeah. Just, let's just move. <laughs> yeah. So Rob and I continue to discuss what options we had left to track down these red deer, but with the storm rolling in and the time that we'd already spent hunting them and how elusive they can be, we figured the time would be better spent, you know, exploring and getting to know each other. And I just really enjoyed this time with Rob and hearing his story, hearing about how, you know, he got into hunting through his uh, now wife's father in Germany and learning all about the intricacies and differences in hunting in Germany and, and then coming back to Australia and applying those same skills uh, and just his love for harvesting and for meat and for drying meat out and these different recipes it was just fantastic i really enjoyed getting to know rob and learning his story so i want to encourage you to go out and find other hunters and hunt with them and, and reach out to me if you want to have a hunt or you want to take me on a hunt i'd love to do that check out the huntsman website and you know reach out to me through the contact form but um i will say this on the way back to the cars we did have this experience so we were just walking and rob literally went like this Look, and there's the tiger snake. Where's his head? On that side. On the right. Yeah. You lit, you, it was like, like centimeters. Yeah, it didn't move a millimeter. Though. It's not moving at all. It just was dead, dead still. Why? Why aren't you moving? Uh, let's not test that out. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. Oh. Narrowly escaped you. Well, there you go. It's about half past 12, nearly one o'clock now. So I'm going to bump out and that was a fun hunt. Like, you know what? Rob saw some deer. I didn't see any deer, but he stepped on a snake and died. There was all the echidna. There was like I hunted in a new area, hunted a species of deer that I haven't really had a lot of experience hunting, learned a lot from Rob, um, met Rob as well, made, you know, a new friend. These are, these are experiences that you can't put a value on. So I'm, I'm really happy that I did it. And I don't even particularly care that I didn't see deer. There is no hunt that is a worthless hunt. You can get something out of everything. That's like the motto of this channel. Anyway, let me know in the comment section below any hunts that you've had recently, experiences that you want to share. Always keen to have them and share them. Also remember huntingtrips.com.au slash membership is where you go for the new hunting club. Uh, this month that I'm giving away um, and January and February is a guided hunt with myself. So you can go on the draw to win that. Bush Edge products, there is a rifle bag and a scope cover that can go. You can go and enter in for that as well. Lots of cool stuff happening. Anyway, hopefully I'll see you soon. Bye. Wait, wait, before you go and watch another video, make sure you go check out the website that I made, huntingtrips.com.au. If you're looking for an Australian guided hunt or hunting course or safari or property to hunt on, it's the best place to find it. It's a great way to support me and a great way to find an amazing hunting experience.